Hey, and welcome back to another video from my uh, Strange Phones playlist, the playlist of videos where I showcase a strange feature or design aspect of a given mobile phone. And uh, we explore the engineering choices or reasons behind uh, why the designers and engineers chose to go with that design aspect or feature and how it impacts the user and how the user would use it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as well. And what we have here today is the Nokia 3650 from 2003. Now the 3650 is a phone that I've covered uh, intensely or extensively on this channel uh, in all forms of videos, a retro style review and unboxing everything. I read just yesterday I did a quick shorts video on this phone as well, showcasing the snake game. Now here's the retro style review video. If you haven't already checked that out, you should go definitely check that out. It's a good video. We cover all the details about the phone, the display, the specs, the build quality, the camera, and everything you need to know about this phone, including a detailed uh, history lesson about the phone. And uh, <clears throat> there's an unboxing video as well. Uh, you can find it uh, up in this card over here. That is my other brand new 3650 that I got for a really good price. Because uh, these phones are quite expensive. Uh, they go in excess of $80 in really good condition. This one, I got it from that $30, uh, 30 phones for $30. So basically I got this phone for $1. And the $30 for 30 phones one also came in this uh, really, really nice case. And I say nice because it doesn't look too nice at this age. However, these cases are really, really rare. Now this thing's charging now, so I won't put it in its case. But uh, finding a case for the 3650 is... Uh, probably harder than finding the phone itself. This case is easily rarer than the phone itself. So that was a big plus point as well. These cases are really hard to find. So that's also a nice addition to my collection as the case is almost complete. It's missing the belt buckle like thing, but uh, that's fine because the majority of the case is still here. So that's also a big plus point. And uh, I have another identical AT&T unit that I've covered before. That one was also like $24. And the one in the box, brand new, is a blue singular wireless one, uh, which uh, looks really nice, by the way. And that thing is brand new still. Uh, you can go check out those videos. They'll be also linked down in the description below. However, in this video, uh, we'll be looking at the, of course, obvious strange feature of this phone, which is its keypad. This rotary style keypad and why the engineers chose to go with this decision and how it was used used by those who chose to, pur uh, to purchase this phone back when it was released in 2003. And we'll also go over a bit of history before that. And yeah, so before jumping right in, as usual, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, uh, as usual, don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the 3650. Do you own one? Do you uh, want to get your hands on one? Did you own one at some point? Uh, this phone is a highly sought after collector's item and a lot of people really like to have uh, this phone in their collection. It is a collector's item here in 2022. So let me know what you think about the 3650 down in the uh, co comment section below and we can start a discussion. Also, don't forget to check out my social media, which is linked down in the description below, which includes Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. And now let's jump into discussing the reason for the design of the Nokia 3650's weird keypad. So let us start off with a small history lesson. Now I've covered this history part before in my previous uh, retro style review video. However, it is important to know the reason uh, behind, uh, it's important to know the history behind this phone before jumping into the reason for uh, this strange keypad. Now, the 3650 was announced in 2002 and released in 2003 uh, in the North American markets as well. It was called the 3600 in the US for some reason. Some people called it the 3600, it was also known as the 3650. And uh, this phone has a bunch of firsts under its belt. It was the first Symbian phone in the United States or the North American market from Nokia. So Nokia's first Symbian phone in the North American market. It is also the uh, first camera featuring phone uh, in the North American market from Nokia. So Nokia's first Symbian phone in the North American market and Nokia's first camera phone in the North American market. And also as a whole, this is Nokia's second ever phone with a built-in camera. The first ever phone is this one over here, this phone's predecessor, I forgot what it was called, uh, that slider phone. But uh, yeah, that phone was this phone's predecessor and this is its successor. This phone is the very second phone 
uh, that Nokia released with a camera. So that's also nice to see. And they promoted this phone's camera quite highly. And uh, they gave a Kodak code with this thing in the box for you to use some Kodak Studio with it. The camera was promoted quite a lot. And it actually has a really nice camera. If you watch the Retro Star review video for a 2003 camera, the camera on this phone is actually really, really good. Uh, you should put it into, uh, of course, put yourself into the shoes of a user in 2003 and then judge the images because judging it from a 2022 perspective is wrong. So uh, looking from the perspective of user in 2000, uh, 2003, um, definitely uh, it is a very nice camera. And also apart from those firsts and the weird design and amazing camera, this phone is packing in terms of features and uh, its battery life is also really, really good as expected from an early 2000s Nokia. It's also built like a tank, just like any early 2000s Nokia and any uh, older Nokia in general. Uh, it also has a lot of features such as an IR blaster over there, Express on covers where you can swap the covers. There are so many third party covers to choose from like Coca-Cola, NFL, those things were given out at events. Uh, all mine have their original covers as you can see here this is the original AT&T cover my other AT&T one also has that uh, cover and uh, so does the brand new one but you could get express on covers for this thing and it's packed with all sorts of software features as well so apart from the camera and the weird design this thing is also packing in terms of features so yeah that was the history of this phone a lot of firsts under its belt and when this thing was released in the North American market, uh, rightfully so, people were weirded out by this thing because they're so used to the old standard uh, square type keypad, as you can see here, the triple click square type keypad. And people have a lot of muscle memory built into this thing as well. Uh, after using the standard keypad for a very long time, people know this is one, this is two. Okay, so that's ABC and then eight is uh, TUV. I remember even my mom with, a, with her... Uh, uh, Nokia 3300 back in the day, she just basically looked away and typed because she had muscle memory built in uh, because the keypad was laid out the same. So you know that three is DEF, five is JKL, etc., etc. So when this strange rotary keypad came out of the blue, people were not that convinced eventually because uh, uh, this does not work well with your muscle memory and uh, turning your finger like that around to type is just strange and not everyone got used to it real fast. So why did they go with this strange design? Let me stop talking and just do it with actions. Do you understand? Let me do it again. I hope you get it by now. It's pretty. It's pretty obvious. It's kind of kind of straightforward. There, it's easier to thumb type with this thing in a rotary fashion. Your thumb moves in a circular pattern while your other fingers are holding the device. And this phone is meant for single-handed use. It is much easier than doing this. Let me show you. Uh, doing this. I mean, I get it for some people. It's easier if, if the phone was stubbier and shorter than this. But on a big phone like this. Uh, this phone is quite top heavy, a bit, a bit towards the top heavy side as well. Uh, when you do that on a phone like that, it kind of feels like it's going to tip over forward like that, as you can see. However, with this rotary style, it's actually quite comfortable and I've used this phone previously and uh, it actually feels quite nice. Now, I don't have muscle memory built into the old style keypad, so it may be not a big issue for me, but people did have an issue back in the day with this strange keypad. Not everyone bought this phone. People like to stick with the older style. However, I understand where the designers came with that because it is so easy to access all the buttons here with your fingers like that and it's easier to type and for some people who uh, got used to it this was easily a superior way to type now uh, nokia with the 3660 as i remember the successor to this phone i'll put it up here if it's not the 3650 uh, the 3660 but i think it's the 3660 the 3660 was the successor to this phone and it had an identical body design however they went back to the old style keypad it was still sort of circular here's a picture of the thing however it was still closer to the old style than this of course and uh, I, I think like if they continued like this design for the 36 series and they uh, made more phones with this rotary style keypad more people would have gotten used to it and we would have seen more phones like this uh, well into 2010 maybe eventually when uh, keyboards on phones started dying off physical keyboards like this in favor of QWERTY and virtual, quote, uh, virtual QWERTY um, 
but still i was kind of sad to see that they didn't uh, continue this design because i'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who liked this design and this typing uh method uh, so it's kind of sad to see they scrapped it after just one phone uh but those who used it i'm pretty sure they enjoyed it at the time because i did uh, it just feels really funky but it also feels really quick when you're in a hurry and you need to type something out this motion is really really helpful so that is where the engineers got the idea for this strange design it was sort of an exper experiment uh, nokia was experimenting with a lot of phones at the time so they had the money to experiment as well with the n-gauge the 3300 and uh, many phones like that with just strange weird designs and features of uh, hybrids like the n93 that uh, flipped and uh, sort of uh, twisted and swiveled in one place and then we had the 5700 express music which was an almost 360 degrees swivel phone uh, strange designs like that nokia had the money to experiment so they did and so did motorola with the weird phones that i mentioned even the previous video uh, this one over here the uh, the motorola crush which is an upside down phone uh, where's that thing uh, here are the two of them. I have them right here. So upside down phone. This is the correct way to hold this phone. The buttons are at the top there. So that's also a very strange phone there. Um, so yeah, Nokia and Motorola had the money to experiment and this phone is easily one of their better experiments. I really like this phone. It's easily one of my favorite Nokia phones of all time. And another reason as to why this phone is a collector's item and not so common is because the strange design meant that it didn't sell too well. So um, there aren't too many of these out there. There are a few of them, don't get me wrong. There are a, a few of these things out there, but they're not the rarest phone ever. However, they're not as common as, for example, a Nokia, 3300, uh, Nokia 3310 or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's probably one of the main reasons this thing didn't sell too well. It's strange design, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, those who bought it enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure I've seen many comments on my previous videos. People really love this phone. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why it's a semi-rare collector's item and sells for really high prices online. So yeah, as a whole, that is uh, why they uh, chose this strange design. That's why the Nokia engineers and designers uh, chose this strange design for the Nokia 3650 back in 2002 when they were designing it and then released it in 2003. A very unique way to type. Sadly, the only one of its type. Its successor, it had the, the round-ish look but the keypad was more uh, akin to the traditional keypad thing and eventually it disappeared over time and they went to the old style because uh, more people preferred it that way. But I'm pretty sure if they continued some models like this, some people would have stuck with this because it is clearly superior in many ways. Uh, and it also looks a bit strange, so I get it. That's where some people probably didn't like it, but I like this design. I really like this phone easily. One of my favorite Nokias of all time and also a highly sought after collector's item. Uh, so yeah, as usual, I hope you enjoyed this this video and if you did uh, please don't forget to leave a big thumbs up on the like button down below and also hit that subscribe button uh, if you really like what you saw and uh, ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video I'm on Instagram discord and Twitter leave a comment also down below and let me know what you think about the 3650 uh, if you own one if you had one at some point if you want to get your hands on one whatever you want to let me know uh, leave a comment down below check out my social media down in the description below uh, thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video